So first point on the agenda is questions and issues open forum. Does anyone have anything they want to discuss? Okay, not hearing anything. Then there's a bunch of issues which might be worth some discussion. So the first of those is from you, Tom. I was just wondering if that still makes some sense for the future or not, or what the plan with it. If you still plan to continue with it, then it's totally fine. I'm just struggling to remember what. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um... I think we can close this. I think there'll be something equivalent um, as a result of the PKI stuff that I'm working on. Um, so this was kind of useful to prove that it doesn't break anything too badly, but I don't think we need this. Should I close it or do you want to close it later? Uh, I'll close it later. I will just double check it is what I think it is. Okay. The next one is this thing, which seems to be sitting around since 6th May. Do we have Marsh on the call? Yeah. Yes, we have. <laughs> so I, basically, I think the problem here is that uh, I don't have time for that, but I would love to have it uh, because I started, I don't know, like, in April with that, uh, we successfully merged the first PR related to the parallelism in a unit test. And we know that uh, the second one just broke something when I was on a PTO. And this one is, I think, the third one, operator and resource package. So uh, uh, I don't know. Like I would love to uh, just uh, work on that, but I currently I don't have time. So if you don't think you will have time anytime soon, maybe we should close the PR and then uh, you still have the branch. So when you get back to it, you can still open a new PR that's, with it. Yeah, that's okay. It sounds reasonable. Should I close it or will you close it later? I will close it later. Okay. Then the next one is this thing. I think we discussed it two months or one month ago. What's the number? 4996. One month ago. Tom Bentley, I think at that time you said that you will have a look at it and see what you think about it. I did say that and I did have a look at it and I will have another look at it. I think it's I think it's kind of the most reasonable thing that can be done which is not to say that it's particularly pretty, um, but given where we and currently it, are. Is it the reasonable thing to do? I think it is. So my concern about this that from the code, it looks to me like it can screw a lot of things, but it doesn't really help with almost anything. What? Go on, explain. So the only thing it solves is when the Kafka cluster is deleted while mm -hmm. the reconciliation is in progress. 
Right. Yeah, in particular while we're hanging around in the Kafka roller, yeah. And 99.999% of cases, that's not really an issue. So what, it will time out sometime later. The mm -hmm. only issue is if someone does the thing that he starts and deletes the cluster with the same name again and again and again. In which case that can cause problems, right? Because the new cluster is not started before the old one kind of the reconciliation times out. But that's from my perspective, super easy to work around by doing the smart thing and using different names for the clusters. So I'm not sure I see much value in what it does. And at the same time, it seems like something what is potential to screw things up if it doesn't work properly. Um, so this is you. <laughs> This is you were talking through that. The thought po popped into my head. I should try and stop having thoughts because they they only get me into trouble. Um, but the Kubernetes way of solving this, the, the sort of the race of of you know uh, creating and deleting clusters in a loop kind of race that you just described, would be to use a finalizer on the on the Kafka CR, right? So that it can't actually be deleted until the operator has said, yeah. Well, that's, that's an option, which is probably a bit cleaner to implement, but it has its own issues and it has its own challenges to the users, right? So the challenge, so the issues with the finalizers, I, I think I see three potential problems. One is that the finalizers have the potential to screw up the whole cluster. You set it up for something, you forget to delete it, you can't delete the namespace anymore and so on. So they need to work and if they don't work, it can be problematic. But there are also two more practical things, right? If a user does, has something deployed and deletes the cluster operator, then basically nothing will get fully deleted. Also that I guess can be seen as a advantage as well as disadvantage. Another thing probably is that if you use the finalizers, then uh, if your cluster is broken, you actually, and the reconciliation is stuck in some waiting for a rolling update, you can't actually delete the cluster until the timeout, right? So I'm not sure whether that's helpful in all cases or whether actually in some cases that makes things harder. Yeah. I mean, coming back to sort of the point you made that made me think of the finalizers, it was sort of the, you know, you, the user should be able to create and delete and create and delete a, a cluster with a given name without it um, getting into a bad state. Ideally the they book. should, right, but... but they won't be able <laughs> i'm not sure whether in the use cases where this is used the finalizer really helps right because it means that instead of deleting and creating the cr which is what most users who run into this do 
you would actually need to delete the CR. Then you would need to have a mechanism to wait whether the CR is actually deleted now. And only if it's actually deleted, you can actually do the apply and create the CR again, right? Yeah. And therefore it's only at the, yeah, we'd need some sort of, obviously the operator would need to remove the finalizer. I mean, technically it's fine. We used to have it in the past when we were not using the garbage collection, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just about implementing it. But I'm not sure the finalizers really brings any advantages to be honest either. I mean, this PR, I don't think it's necessarily something what's wrong with it. My concern is that we, that it's really just a edge case, which it solves. And if it causes troubles, it can be consuming a lot of resources to detect issues, fix it and so on. Yeah. Um, it's tricky. I mean, I don't disagree that we're sort of, uh, this is a bit edge casey, but I, I think it might be worth exploring the finalizer idea a little bit more. I'm not sure I've sort of, um, uh, properly understand all the down points that you mentioned. But it seems that um, it's quite possible that if we uh, apply 4996, that we'd then find that there was some other weird edge case to do with that creation deletion. So and I don't the think- The final analysis seems to be a, a good way of just, you know, avoiding that whole creation deletion problem in a sort of a, a coup sort of uh, Kubernetes style. It's not necessarily exclusive one or the other, right? Each is solving something different. Mm -hmm. There are many cases where the operator might be hanging up in the reconciliation. Now, what this PR does is that when you delete it, it actually stops the running reconciliation in some way. The finalizers would not do this. The finalizers would just make the operator wait for uh, mm -hmm. finishing the reconciliation. And then it would wait for the re operator to actually delete the things. But I think it's fine for the... Um... I mean, is it... Let me put it another so, way. Is it is it a problem if we sort of sit there in the... Kafka roller, not doing anything, and then eventually timing out, and then... Well, there are two different things, right? So the, the use case for which this PR was opened was when the deletion actually caused the reconciliation to be stuck, right? And that, to some extent, the finalizers address because they would not delete the cluster while the reconciliation is running. So assuming it is just a race condition, then the race condition would actually not happen because the deletion of the resources will be postponed until the reconciliation finishes. It's, I guess, yeah, it might not be trivial to implement the finalizers. 
maybe it would. Hmm. But so this issue in would address in general even situations when the reconciliation is stuck for other reasons not related to the resource deletion. Finalizers would not. Yeah, they're not, neither of them solves exactly the same set of problems as the other. I also think that to some extent, this might not be issue for many operators who have short reconciliation cycle. There's a lot of operators who do things differently than we do and don't really wait for things to happen as we do. They would just finish the reconciliation when stuff is not ready and wait for the next one, basically. Which is another way how to shorten the, how to solve this problem, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had that said, ideas along I'm those lines not in the sure. past. Yeah, I guess it has advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. It would be quite a big change to how the operator currently works. That's the a significant disadvantage. Yeah, and I'm not sure how many things. In theory, it should not matter and it should be a change which doesn't require anything else than shortening the operation timeout, right? But uh, there might be things like, I don't know about the Kafka roller, for example, which rely on some internal state, which will be lost, for example. So we would need to remove all of these places, basically. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good thing. Because we shouldn't, you know, ideally, there would be absolutely no internal state going on, it would all yeah, that's, that's definitely a good thing, but the that's question CD. is how much work it is, right? Yeah, I know. Come back to the first disadvantage. So what do we do with this PR? Can I think about it? Yeah. Sure. I realize I've already thought about it. Um, but I'd like to, yeah, just weigh up those three alternatives. I also think, like for this PR in particular, I think one of the aspects which we really need to configure is uh, consider is how much we believe that it actually works on 100% or 99.9%, right? And how much we are just shooting ourselves in the foot to solve something what's not truly really an issue for 99.9 users. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's not the sort of cleanest solution for sure. Well, that's putting it rather, it's not the, yeah, it's not the easiest patch to reason about. Okay, so let's think a bit more about it. And the last PR was the one from Shubham with the after and before load config map in the status. I think Kyle had a look at it. It would be great if Tom and Paolo as the others involved with the cruise control.
can have a look as well and review it. Paolo is not here, so. Any other PRs anyone wants to discuss? Okay, so next point on agenda is the Zuki plus Kafka in streams CRDs. I really don't want to discuss it here, but I just wanted to have it in the community meeting for everyone to know about it. So this is a document I put together around some of the options I considered for how the Kafka CRD might change with the Zookeeper removal. I don't think the things described there are perfect, but uh, they uh, are the best I could fold, I could come up with. So yeah, anyone interested, feel free to have a look and uh, leave comments uh, and feedback and uh, especially any better ideas you might have. Uh, telling me that something there looks stupid and complicated is not that useful. If I don't know any better way how to handle it, so please suggest the better ways. Jakob, what's the what do you want to do about moving that forward? Obviously, people can comment on it, and if anyone's got any better ideas, then I'd love for them to kind of contribute them. But what do you want to do about kind of making a decision on which way we go with that? I don't know. I think I'm still willing to sit on it and wait for the night when I wake up with a miraculous idea which solves it. Okay. It might be the same night that I have a miraculous idea about for 996. <laughs> well, that would be some night then. I guess. If, you, if you let me know, I'll try and have a mirac miraculous idea about anything. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't think the proposal there is perfect. And I don't think we are at the point to start working on it. So I think, yeah, we have still more time with it, at least a little bit. But then when we run out of time or when we have something better, then I guess it should change into regular proposal in the streams proposals and get through the approval process. I'm just aware that we're getting to kind of summer and people are going to be taking PTO hopefully. So um, don't want to be kind of reliant on kind of reviews that aren't able to happen because people are away. Not sure I should reply to that. Maybe you are too optimistic if you think this happens in summer. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Yeah, I guess we will see. Uh, are there I any there other stuff which we wanted to do first anyway, as the stateful sets removal and so on? So, yeah, I'm really a bit skeptical that any work on that would start this summer. Are there any external people that we can think of who might give us a kind of view on the kind of design of the CRD? I don't know. I guess everyone can comment. But I think the whole upgrade story 
makes it a bit complicated as well if you don't know the current CRD and the Strimzy implementation of it. Okay. Anything else to this, anyone? So the next point is, wait, let's add some notes around this. Okay, the next point is the test container future. Marosh, I think last time we said that you will think a bit about it. Did you manage to get to it or? A little bit, I would say, but... Uh... So do we want to go for it or should we move it for next time or? I think I can tell something and okay. maybe we can then consider. So. So basically, uh, I looked at a uh, bunch of things like I considered some pros and cons of the test container. Overall, I have maybe te tears in my eyes because I don't know, like Epicurio, uh, we are inside of the bridge and uh, I don't know which from our project are using it. It's from the dependencies point. Uh, I know that there is issues with the um, the deconfiguration stuff, and uh, I know that you, Jakob, you have some troubles in setting up, but I found out that if we want, for example, configure some, I don't know, basic things in the Kafka broker, it should be, it could be some map uh, which I can inject into the uh, Kafka container. But if we want to, I don't know, like do some TLS encryption, etc., uh, that would be much, uh, much effort compared to these uh, configurations. But I think that's, that's okay. If uh, we consider this change as, I don't know, like good and not so time consuming. And there is second point that uh, which we already discussed that uh, that uh, overload overload between like when we do the, the releases and uh, there is some uh, issues with the building images etc cetera, etc cetera. so we have to move this uh, Kafka container to the separate repo to avoid these issues and blah blah we know that. The question is that if if it is worth, but I think from the point of I don't know, you had issue with uh, TLS encryption or there's some basic configuration inside Kafka broker. I think it was just some configuration inside the broker. Uh -huh. Like so, I think. Like disabling it, some options that was okay. in the in the in the bridge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if there uh, if if it is some simple configuration i think that would be okay for the change i think that, that will be just the map as i said before the question is i guess how do you inject the map into the into the kafka configuration um, I can uh, probably, uh, there is the config server properties and I maybe can uh, somehow iterate over that map and put the map inside that properties file or something okay. like that. So, but again, uh, is it worth of it, uh, doing that? I don't know, I guess good start 
for it to see whether it's worth it would be whether we can use it in our own tests, right? Yes. So maybe that's something like you, you, you mean in an integration test, right? Yeah. Or maybe, yes. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it's something where you can try to go through the integration tests where we use either the Debezium Kafka cluster or the embedded Kafka cluster today mm -hmm. and see whether that can be replaced, whether you can extend the container to match these use cases, like check what configuration it is doing uh, and so on. Uh, I think some of the tests might also need multiple nodes. Hmm. That but anyway, I think quite... okay. searching for the searching for the Debezium Kafka cluster and the embedded Kafka cluster, that should give you fairly good idea of what are different options and configurations we use there. Of course. And maybe based on that, we can think better. So you don't need to change it right away, but it would be good to think whether these things can be easily satisfied by the test container. OK. Maybe in in the next call, I can provide more info about that stuff related to the integration tests. OK. So I can take a look and hopefully some I figure it out that it will work on the integration test. Uh, is Mark on the call? No. I think there are some OAuth integration tests as well, but I think he's using the images somehow already today on his own. I think there is some Docker Compose. Yeah. But yeah, it will be great to see also how. Okay, that's good start, I think. <laughs> okay. Anyone, anything else to test container? Okay, I don't see Jakub on the call. I think you wanted to talk more about the uh, Stream the scenarios in Litmus Chaos, but I guess if he's not around, we postpone it for the next time. So, anyone has anything else to discuss? Nope, not me. Then I guess that sounds like it for today. Thanks for joining everyone. See you next time. Thanks folks. Thanks.